G'day ladies and gents, and welcome back to War Thunder. Today, we're going to be having a look at a plane that has been kind of forgotten, but because of the new battle rating expansion to 11.0, and a couple of other things, it has come back into the limelight, giving us a bit of an extra look at the Hunter F6. The Hunter F6 had a fairly controversial entry to the game, with the SRAMs being the most powerful missiles at the time, and within about 2 kilometers, they can be considered the most powerful missiles in the game. Of course though, before we get into the video itself, I would like to take a moment to talk about our sponsor. This video is sponsored by Adventure Capitalist. Adventure Capitalist is the wealth building game involving clever use of your current assets to make more money, to go and buy more assets, to make more money, and so on. Because it's impossible to lose, you can play when you're not busy doing other things like sitting through sponsored sections of my videos, or taking slightly longer lunch breaks in the bathroom, or, if you're crazy enough, waiting for a naval match in War Thunder. It's not a game that requires hours of dedication or a steep learning curve, so it makes an excellent chilled out game. For those of you that insist on avoiding the Chinese and Soviet vehicles in War Thunder because communism, Adventure Capitalist is the perfect way to keep the red away, and instead fill your day with the glimmering green of the not so humble banknote. Adventure Capitalist has been going strong for six whole years, which is almost unheard of for a mobile game, and for their sixth birthday, they're putting on a couple special things. If you download Adventure Capitalist within the next six weeks, you will receive some limited time events, a party hat giveaway, six free time warps for Time Warp Wednesday, store sales, and a bunch of nice little deals. If you like building your wealth and supporting the channel, check out the link in the description below, or you'll get Kligma. Kligma link. Get it? Click Kligma. C can we leave 20, like, 17 now? Okay. Do it, or you won't be invited to the Spitfire Enjoyers Secret Society. All jokes aside, Adventure Capitalist helps support the channel out and provides funding for upgrades and improvements to the quality of my content. Thank you for supporting me, and thank you to Adventure Capitalist for supporting this video. Thank you very much to Adventure Capitalist once again for supporting the channel, and of course, you might want to know what the money goes to. Of course, this money does not touch my bank account, it actually goes straight to upgrading the channel, so I've recently purchased a GoPro and uh, a couple of other things to sort of mount it and light it and all that sort of stuff, so that money will be directly going to that. Uh, the next upgrade, you guys let me know in the comment section below what you want to see. Maybe it'll be an SM7B, a new microphone, uh, or maybe it could be an RTX 3080 Ti, which uh, at the moment, won't improve the quality of the videos because I'm running a 1080p monitor, but of course, it would be always nice to have an RTX 3080 Ti. Anyway, ladies and gents, onto the video here. We have the Hunter F6. This plane is, um, once again, it's, it's shining. It's shining pretty bright. And with the new sort of jets that have been added to the 9.7 to 10.0 area, namely the Harriers and anything with flares, honestly, uh, things like the Yak-38s, which don't have flares, but are still quite powerful. Uh, and of course, things like Su-7s, uh, things that are quite fast, and uh, kind of compete with the Hunter on a, on a different level. These planes have given the Hunter F6 a bit of a run for its money, but it still competes extremely well, and that's kind of what I want to explore today. The Hunter F6 is one of those planes that does need a little bit of love and care, and of course, the SRAMs are not perfect. They're not foolproof, they're not completely brain dead overpowered in certain most situations in certain situations they certainly can be on the potent side but you have to try and get yourself into that position now with the hunter it is not that easy because you're a very heavy plane now granted you are fast and you do have plenty of energy retention this thing does not accelerate particularly well up until sort of 800 kilometers per hour which is then when you sort of see that speed that is really, really nice. Now, I'm engaging a Yak-38 here because if a Yak-38 gets behind me, it is very, very easy to get an R60 straight up the back, and I don't really want that. So Yak-38 is going to cop an SRAM, nice and, and, and fiery, sets him on fire, pretty damn easy. So we're just going to move on to the next target. The fire ends up killing him, which is really nice, but uh, I do have to be a little bit wary because this map is a sort of sunset map, and on these types of sunset maps, you do get a little bit of dodgy spotting. Your spotting distance is kind of low, and I do have to keep my head on a swivel, which is okay, but it doesn't really help 
with those AI around. They have the same markings as a Yak-38 would for a player, uh, and I would kind of like to see that change. So I would like to see a marker be a little bit different for an AI. Now, head-on with this Sabre produces basically the same result as if you would head-on an AI, meaning a uh, nice little kill there. And a MiG-15 who has climbed is about to dive onto me. Now, I know the MiG-15 can't exceed 1050, so what I'm going to do is dive and exceed 1050. So he's just never going to catch me, and therefore I don't have to worry about him. The MiG-17 here, it does look like you might want to go for a last minute head-on, and uh, of course, last minute head-ons get you sent back to the hangar. No sympathy there if you're going to be doing a last minute head-on, because that's exactly what you deserve. Make sure you pull off on your head-ons, at least, at least with a kilometer and a half of jets. So, the MiG-15 has been distracted by a friendly J-32, and this is my time to strike. The J-32, if he continues to sort of travel where he's going, might end up with a good intercept position, but he has climbed up a little bit too aggressively for me to get to. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to follow through because the MiG-15 is well and truly distracted on, on that uh, J-32, and I'm going to prep the SRAM. I'm not going to have it uh, sort of last minute ready. I want to have it as ready as possible, and of course at that sort of one kilometer mark is when I'm going to want to make my mark. I'm going to make sure not to hit my friendlies there because I have done that with way too many missiles. And of course, at 800 meters, boom, too easy kill. This guy is way too damn slow, giving me kill number four with uh, two SRAMs. Not bad at all. This plane does have some amazing capabilities in a full down tier. Of course, not really sure why there's a MiG-15 at uh, sort of 8.7 when... Or it's an, it's an 8.3 actually. This thing is 10.0, so you don't really see him. He must have been fail squatting with someone, but... Uh, Needless to say, the MiG-15 did get a little bit of a smacking there. Now, a smacking is going straight to this Su-7, who is concentrated on a base and uh, might just make a tasty morsel. He seems distracted, and he is a target that is sort of in the vicinity. So I'm going to launch it at about one kilometer there, and that should be just enough traveling at a thousand kilometers per hour to land myself the kill. The second Su-7 has dipped underneath the sun and is therefore a much easier target. Launch him at a fairly high angle of attack and the SRAM manages to pull through with that beautiful thrust vectoring engine. So I have two kills here off two SRAMs and I'm going to try and make it four for four by uh, appeasing the snail somehow. Maybe maybe I'll buy some golden eagles and get some uh, good games out of it. Of course that's just a joke but uh, it sometimes does feel that way. Anyway, Yak 38s, two of them, nice and juicy targets but of course very very dangerous when they're on the uh, on the front end. Fire some shots, no dice there, I'm going to continue straight, not going to turn with a Yak-38, just because if one of them gets on my 6, then I'm pretty much screwed. Now an AV-8 here, looking like a juicy target, he's tr traveling to the side there, but his travel rate is just a little bit too fast for me, I can't quite keep up with him, and so he is going to go off on his merry way, and I'm going to go and engage something else that is within the Hunter F6's line. So, F5 is also looking juicy, but I'm not going to go for that, that's an F5C, and of course, even if it was an F5 Shenyang Gang Gang, we're not going to go head on with it anyway, because we are traveling a little bit slow, and there isn't much time to evade it. So what I'm going to do is just go around, and it's giving me a fairly good opportunity to engage some targets that are distracted. The F5 is looking juicy once again, but he's well within the uh, safe zone, and an F1, F uh, an F11, like, where did, where, where'd you come from, mate? He's come from behind, and it's time to get on a sneaky reversal if he doesn't get distracted, and that's exactly what happens. The Hunter F6 is really good for those distracted targets, and uh, the F11 has basically made himself a fairly easy target, making himself nice and slow, and of course if I can close the distance to about 1.5, 1.3, then I can get myself a very nice SRAM kill. It looks like he's going to commit to a little bit of a turning battle because that Hunter FGA-9 is in the vicinity, but as soon as he decides he's going to commit to a turn, that is when I'm going to fire the SRAM and land myself kill number 3. Look at that SRAM go. Of course, you can be using these things at longer ranges, and longer being about a kilometer, uh, but obviously you would want to be using these at sort of close-ish ra close ranges, I can English. Maybe about 600 meters will be ideal when they're heading laterally, as in from side to side. Just like this MiG-19 is here, he is fairly distracted by the T2 and is going to give chase. And this uh, is basically one of the shots that you can just mwah, mwah, pull off with that Hunter F6 SRAM. Man, that is absolutely some beautiful stuff. The SRAMs are one of those missiles that can seem to track just whatever the hell you want, but uh, it doesn't always work that way. If you're going to be fighting targets with uh, things like flares, 
or very, very quick targets, then you're going to be running out of luck. What you need to do is look for a target that's slow and look for a target that is uh, maybe distracted, maybe not firing flares, or maybe doesn't have flares, like this SU-17 here. I'm going to fire a missile and get myself killed number one here with a beautiful sort of frontal-ish, side-ish aspect of the SRAM. These things can track targets like that, but they have to be traveling in a fairly straight line or have to be extremely slow because the thrust vectoring is not perfect on these things. Now, SQ-7 here looking fairly juicy as well. He is in a bit of a sort of side-ish aspect, and I'm just going to make sure he isn't going to dip below the right-hand side of the mountain there, fire the SRAM, and that leads quite beautifully whilst dodging an enemy coming in. So I'm going to keep my speed here because speed is going to be a key in the Hunter. Not only is it a good thing for jets to be fast, uh, but it is also good to just remain faster than your opponents or just keep traveling in a straight line when you feel like you're in a little bit of a threat. Uh, sometimes that can string out your opponents to the point where they're going to be uh, like a bit more vulnerable or 1v1 where you can handle them a bit better. But in this case, the enemies have seemed to have peeled off and that gives me a chance to roll over and engage something like a Yak-38 or this MiG-21 who is fairly distracted. He seems like he is going to get in range in a second, but if he manages to... No, he, he's going to travel in a straight line. Oh well. Well, I guess kill number three is going to have to wait for a little bit, but it's not going to have to wait for too much longer. There's an F5 and an SU-7 that seem to be harassing some teammates, and the F5 is now going to head towards my uh, other teammates, this sort of group behind us. But a MiG-19PT comes out of the clouds and gives me a little bit of a spook, so I'm going to give him a best a be dish best served with SRAMs. That is correct. We're going to be sort of following through with him because he's going to chase the Harrier GR1 and hopefully I can get the Harrier GR1 to survive this engagement and therefore net me a uh, potential teammate for use later. But unfortunately for me, the missile just decides to do whatever. But it's okay because he's distracted. I'm able to cut in on the inside and therefore set the, the, the guy the on fire, the MiG-19. So that should be kill number three, right? Right? Uh, I, I try not to kill steel, uh, but things like this just make me want to throw all my morals out the window and uh, just, just take whatever kill because I just can't trust people to, to be nice and, and give me kills. Unfortunately for that SRAM, that is one of the shots that I'm talking about where you're looking at that uh, fairly high tracking rate, especially as they close the distance so quickly, it doesn't give the SRAM a lot of time to react. So you don't have a foolproof missile. You still have to get enemies that are slow, and the trick is, if you're fighting this thing, to remain fast. I said that when the Harrier originally came out, you've got to remain fast, you've got to keep your speed, because otherwise the Harriers are going to have a lot more of an easy time getting you, and that still holds with the... Uh, SRAMs on the Hunter F6. The only difference between that is that instead of having a plane that is super fast, climbs really well, you have a plane that is super fast and retains energy very well. So just think of this as a sort of side graded Harrier GR1 that isn't premium. Honestly, I think the Hunter F6 is kind of better than the GR1 just because it's got a little bit more to the table. Um, and of course, the Hunter whilst not being premium, is still a fairly capable jet. It has plenty of speed, it has really, really good energy retention, and of course the four SRAMs and the more, or the greater ammo capacity, in my opinion, make it a better candidate than the Harrier GR1. Even though you're basically only two S, not SRAMs, two uh, cannons down, it makes the difference, and the fact that they're mounted forward in the nose also makes a significant difference. Now, Potato Sam is right here, and unfortunately for me, the Harrier manages to yoink the kill. Of course, this particular kill it made me a little bit uh, frustrated, because I didn't manage to get my shots on. I don't know what it was, but it takes a little bit of time to get used to these guns. Speaking of getting used to these guns, maybe we'll get some dice in the head-on, and no. The guns are on this weird sort of spot, and it does take a bit of time to get used to. Now, because this MiG-21 is uh, fairly distracted, I am able to sort of turn with him, and this is where I have my, my time with this F-13 here. He's very, very slow, and just it doesn't matter how hard he pulls, he can't pull out of the way far enough to get out of my guns. And whilst the MiG-21 is technically a better turn fighter than the Hunter, at low speeds, the MiG just pulls so much and loses so much speed that the Hunter is able to snap on very, very rapidly and so, therefore, can get some easy kills. Now, 
The Hunter F6, is it a fantastic plane now that the battle ratings have sort of opened up a bit? I think so. I think it really has its potential. You're not going to be getting amazing games every time you play against MiG-21 Bisses or F4Es or Mirages or things like that, but you certainly are going to get a lot more competence. You are going to get a lot more down tiers, and of course, being at that lower matchmaker, you are more likely to get uh, that quantitative matchmaker on your side having fewer of your uh, adversaries on a particular team, or if you're going to get fully up tiered, you'll have an equal number of uh, bottom feeders to sort of feed on until you can sort of move on to the bigger prey. As for this thing being uh, fairly good 10.0, I think it's I think it's fine where it is. I think that this plane has plenty of, uh, of room to grow, and it's got plenty of weaknesses as well. Of course, critical hits to SU-7s make it a very fine machine to sort of play with. This thing... When you get the guns right, it is fantastic. When you unlock all the upgrades, because I remember playing the Hunter F1 stock, it was it was miserable. It was absolutely miserable. But when you fully upgraded it, it was beautiful. And I would assume that the Hunter F6 is not too far off. Now, this thing obviously retaining a lot of energy. Have a look at how quickly I'm catching up to this SU7. I'm pretty sure he's going to try some gamer moves and drop some bombs. So I pull up really quick, and then I realize that I'm at the enemy's airfield. Now, I don't... I very, very rarely strafe runways, and one of the only reasons why I might strafe a runway is because the enemy has tried to do it to me, and uh, so I'll just sort of give them a bit of their own medicine, if you will. Uh, alternatively, if someone's camping the airfield, I will be more likely to strafe them, but this guy seems to be doing the right thing and taking off looking for a fairly fair fight. Now, the MiG-21 does pick up speed fairly quickly, and if he does play his cards right, I will have an issue on my hands, but... Uh, have a look at what this MiG-21 does. Oh no, he's just turned, flat turn, right in front of my guns and done exactly the same thing that the MiG-21F did earlier. He's given himself a very, very slow maneuver and allowed him to sit in front of my guns. And that is probably the easiest kill I've ever gotten in the Hunter F6. Screw the SRAMs, the guns are where it's at on this thing, especially when you get up tiered. You will love the uh, Aiden Cannons, of course only having a range of 0.8, but that doesn't really matter because there are plenty of the capabilities in this plane to sort of drag you along that 11.0 battle rating. I would certainly rate it higher than things like the F-104 at 10.0, and it is certainly one of those 10.0s that is right up there. I would only say maybe the F-8U is better, but that is to be decided. Anyway, ladies and gents, thank you very much for watching. Thank you to Adventure Capitalists for sponsoring this video. Of course, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching. I really appreciate your time, and I appreciate all the support that you're giving me in the channel throughout the past month. Thank you very much for watching. Take care, and I'll catch you next time.